Hi, my name is Cindy. Um, I understand that we're going to do a port draw on you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your port? When did you get it placed? Who, who put it in for you? And do you have any um, written information about the port so that we know what kind of port we're accessing? And have you ever had it flushed before? Is this a brand new port that we're just now accessing today? Or have you had it flushed like once a month for 20 years? I mean, I need to know a little bit more about the port itself so I know what to expect. Um, oh, so you only had a place yesterday. Well, I want you to know that it's going to be a little tender when I do go to access it. There's no way I can stop it from being tender because you do have the new incisions where he, he placed the port. But we will use some numbing right over the port when we go to access with the needle. So I can promise you, you won't feel the needle going into your skin, but you still will feel pressure. And we're only going to put enough pressure on there to find out where that port is, and we're only going to put enough pressure in there to hold it still while we put the needle in, and then that will be all over with. Okay? So you're all ready for this. The doctor explained to you what to expect, and um, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask him. Okay? Oh, great. Then we'll get started. I'll get my sterile field, and um, we'll get going. Can you tell us what you just did and why you did that, Cindy? Well, I um, I don't want the patient to, I want to know where the patient's at with the situation, if they're an experienced patient that knows what a port is for and why they're here, and I want to know that they know what to expect. So, yes, it, the first time you access a port, it's going to hurt, if that's the very first time. But after that, it should just be a minimal poke with a lidocaine, if that's even what they choose. Some people don't want the lidocaine, they just want you to just go ahead and do all the sterile procedure and then access it in one poke and they're done. So um, that's where I want to know where the patient's at, why they got the port, what kind of medic, and it, that that they understand what medicine they're getting today and why we're doing this. Great, so. thanks. Hi, I'm Cindy Sewell, and I'm going to be showing you about accessing the Purple Power Port or any port. But I wanted to show you the kind of port that we place here at this hospital. It's called the Purple Power Port and it is cleared for CT scans. It is a high pressure port. It does have three triangles on it, which helps you know that it is a Purple Power Port when it's under the skin, but it also helps you kind of locate the inside of those three triangles because as you can see, that's where most of the access area lies. It'll, it, it gets placed in the chest about in here and it goes up underneath the, the clavicle and up into a uh, major vein and down into the chest. Um, so they do move around a little bit even if they're stitched in because they do have these soft rubber places where the surgeon can stitch them in to try to help hold them in place but they don't always stay there. So palpating that port is important. So even before I put on my clean gloves, I have clean sterilized hands, I palpate to see where that port is under the skin. So I'm going to be a surgeon today. Here we go. And most of the time you can tell that there's a bulge in the skin. And you can say, okay, well I can't feel the bumps, but I know the port's there. And I can actually palpate around the the port to know that yes that's where it's at and that's what I do before I ever put on these clean gloves I've already sterilized my gloves or my, my hands and, and, and just palpated it and it doesn't hurt the patient to palpate it unless you're really pushing hard on it which you don't want to but you they're usually okay now the ports can be accessed a day after they're put in they can be used the day after they get put in. They come with a dressing on and you remove their dressing and check the wounds for them and document what they look like, but you can um, go ahead and access that and use that port for the day. So our next step is to actually put on our clean gloves, sterilize that, and then put the lidocaine in if the patient chooses lidocaine, which they usually do the first time, to numb it a little bit before we actually do the access.
Okay, so as you can tell, I've already palpated with clean hands the port where it's at. I'm going to take, with clean gloves, I'm going to use an alcohol swab and scrub around the port really good. And then I'm going to let that dry. And as soon as that gets dry, then I'm going to take my insulin syringe with lidocaine in it, 0.5. And I'm going to use my clean hand, I'm on my clean glove, and I'm just going to go right in above that port, under the skin, and give that lidocaine, which usually you leave with a little bubble there. And that's going to sit for a second while I change into my sterile gloves. So in the meantime, hopefully that lidocaine is working in that, that um, this poor little lady here is um, getting number. This is my sterile field. I opened it all away from me onto the, the sterile field. I tried to make sure I thought of everything I needed before I started so that I don't have to, after I get my sterile gloves on, try to remember things, especially if I'm in the room by myself here. Okay, so I've got my syringes my um, chloroprep swabs, I've got a, a dressing, and I've also got um, gauze if I need it, and an end for my needle. I have my safety needle. It is a non-pouring safety needle, and we use, we try to use the one inch 20 gauge. It, sometimes we only have the one and a half inch available, and if it sticks up too much out of the chest, you're going to want to um, you're going to want to support it a little bit in the chest even if it's temporary here. Okay, so now I have my sterile gloves on and I'm going to start prepping. And you start over the port and you work your way out away from it. So are you doing okay? She's not very talkative, so. And I just keep starting in the middle and working my way out all three times, scrubbing with the Cora Prep. Okay, so that's going to dry. And in the meantime, I can come back over here and um, get my needle ready. So I'm putting this on. I would draw up normal I would I will have I would have already drawn these up and put them back here but I'm not going to actually draw them up today so but here I have my 10 cc's of saline and I'm going to flush it just till I see what fluid come out of the end there and get ready and if that isn't quite dry yet you can take some of the gauze that you put on your still field and help take a little of the excess off but really let it dry as long as it needs to dry okay so I have my one inch needle and I'm going to come in here and with this hand only is the only hand I'm going to put on the skin this one's going to stay sterile I'm going to palpate again and I'm going to get a hold of that knee of that port this doesn't hurt the patient. What hurts more is if you try to stab it and you miss it or and you have to fish around for it. So I know that that is going to be right down in the middle because I'm going to go right down in between these two fingers and I'm going to go down into the port. So you don't you only use a 10 cc syringe, nothing smaller on the port tubing. I'm going to try to flush a little bit. If it flushes fairly easy. I'll go ahead and flush a few cc's. Then I'm going to pull back to see if I can get blood back. So if I got blood back, then I'll go ahead and flush this back down in. So, um, all right. Oh, it won't let me because I didn't unlock it. See how good those locks are? I was trying to figure out why it wasn't going to let me flush. But I drew back, got blood. We have the attachments 
First I'm going to, now that I've done that, I'm going to lock it again. I'm going to dress it before I get rid of my sterile. I'm going to put that down. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put over the middle there. Ooh, see those darn things wrinkle up so you have to be real careful when you're pulling them off to get them nice and flat and sealed all the way around. Okay. So now I've got it dressed so now I can take off my sterile glove. I took off my gloves and now I can take off my mask because we have a complete sealed dressing around there. And there's a couple of different things I want to talk about. One is the two different accesses for the end of the port here. This, these are blood accesses. This one goes on the 10 cc syringe after you've drawn blood out of the tubing. This one goes directly onto the tubing. Now if you've had difficulty drawing the blood back, you know it's there, it's coming out nice and slow with the 10 cc syringe, then you're going to want to go this route and keep it that way. You waste 10 cc's of blood, then you pull then you pull a new tube out and then so I have say I have 10 cc of blood in this or 8 or 7 however many I needed for the actual blood draw I squeeze it on I put it on here and then I can put it into the blood tubing okay that will fill that tubing up but if it comes out really nice and brisk and easy here then you can use this um, attachment the blue one and you unlock it and you put your tubing onto here and usually it'll automatically fill to however much vacuum is in that tube and how much you need for lap okay so then you're going to want to lock this pull this off take this off scrub it with our little sight scrubs and then flush it with normal saline and then lock it so that you have a patent uh, you maintain the patency of your port. Say I access this, it flushed beautifully, but I could not get any blood back from it. We do have a product called Cath Flow, and I'm not going to bring that out. Um, you can get it from Neil. It comes in a small bottle, it's sterilized powder. You add 2.2 milliliters of sterile water to it, and you pull out one milliliter of it, and you would put it into the port, lock the cap after you place it into the port, lock it, let it sit 30 minutes. You come back, you want to aspirate it. I've cleaned it with the side scrub. I put a new clean um, syringe on there. I pop this. If I can get, I pull back as much as I can from it. If I can't get blood out of it, I'm still pulling out that medicine as much as I can. And after I pulled out the medicine, I clicked that, get a clean syringe with normal saline in it, and then I slowly flush it again. Then I take the other half of the cast flow, if in a half hour I couldn't get blood back, and I've removed that excess med because I don't want to push it into her system because that's a blood thinning medication that she might not need right at this moment. It's strictly there for the clot buster. I um, I put the other half of that little vial, which is another milliliter of the cast flow in, and I lock it again. So, in the, another half hour, I go and I aspirate. If I get blood back, great. I pull back at least five or six cc's, throw that blood away, flush it with the new normal saline, and then if I need to draw blood, I can go about doing just what I had already done. Pull out your waist, get your blood, put it into the tube, and then flush and lock it. Um, I think some people that are using the cath flow didn't realize that they had to pull back that medicine out of the tubing, and it's not good to push it into the into the um, patient because it is a blood thinning medication. So we we finished that. We we got our blood. 
we're going to go ahead and start using this for infusions or blood draws, whatever we need. Each time we go to get the get into this, we're going to use a site scrub and we're going to scrub that in before we put a syringe onto it. Show the site, site scrub one more time. Comes in like this. Mm -hmm. Come, it looks like that. Um, it has a whole bunch of little spongy, feely things in there. Okay. The, and you just put it down in there and you scrub it. And it scrubs the inside as well as the outside of that. Okay, great. Of that. And then I can put a clean needle on it or a sterile needle, unlock this, and flush it with normal saline or medication or whatever I'm using at that point. Okay? Now I make sure this is locked every time because that if you don't lock it, that allows the pressure to go back and forth. That allows blood to creep back up into the tubing and can cause it to clot up again. That's what our bodies normally do. So I think that's everything. Okay, thanks, Sibby. Great.